Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. We are on the trail one more time. I know it's been a little bit of a while, but good things take time. In today's episode, I am very, very happy to share, to do this video with you guys and for you guys, because it's been quite a minute since I've picked this guy's brain. Awesome person, human being. I, I consider him a friend. I also consider him a mentor. I've learned a couple of things from him um, that I've actually applied myself into my personal and business life. Um, very successful businessman, very, very successful. He's not afraid to show, to delegate, if you will, how he's been doing it, the ups and downs. It's not always about rainbows and sunshines. He really goes in deep and he really literally tells you that he has felt that he has, what he has gone through to be where he's at today. And obviously this channel is exactly about that. Learning from others, what have they been doing? What do they do? How do they do it? Share some knowledge. And we're out here on the trail and having some fun. So with that being said, I'm going to introduce you guys to Mr. Cesar Gomez, buddy old pal. What's up, Alex? Alex? Yeah, I'm great, brother. Thank you for, for the invite and thank you for the kind words. <laughs> nah, that was a little bit. I can say more, but then that, that's 30 minutes of, of talking right there. <laughs> I know. I appreciate the invite. I know it's been, um, you know, every time we get together, we learn from each other. Um, so I always say it's not about how much time you spend with somebody. It's the quality of time. It is. And the time that we always get to spend together, we're, we're growing. So I really appreciate that invite, and I'm, I'm super actually excited to be here. I'm grateful um, because actually this is what I always envision of doing is being able to have the freedom of time to now pay it forward and be able to share my journey with everyone, right? And as you know, I got back onto my podcast as well, and you know I've been able to actually share my whole story, which you were able to listen to, but yeah. I'll share a little a bit of my background, who I am, you know, so all your, your followers and your viewers to kind of get an idea. Uh, you know, I'm just a normal kid uh, that grew up in the city of Rialto. I, I was not born privileged. You know, I come from Mexican parents from Jalisco, and I'm forever, I'm, I'm grateful to be, you know, Mexican-American. <laughs> and, saca la botella. And, you know, one of the things that I always say, I've, I've, I've always had the DNA of an entrepreneur since I could remember. I only had two jobs growing up, um, and they were very short period of time. I say I lasted four months in one and then like six months in the other. And then after that, I, I, I've been always out there trying to figure out how to, how to make that dollar. But, you know, through that whole process, you know, I could tell you now that it's not about making the dollars about making a difference and growing yourself. Um, you know, I used to think, oh, I got to make $100, which is fine. But if I didn't make a difference, the dollar, the $100 didn't mean anything. And today, you know, we, we could literally talk about, you know, the whole journey, my whole journey, my whole process. You know, one of the things that I was sharing with you before we started recording was that it's, it's about giving back, giving value, right? A lot of people think there's a secret to success and there is no secret, it's, it's, it's hard. You know, every single day I wake up, I tell myself today's gonna be a hard fucking day. And, and I don't go into the day thinking it's gonna be easy because it's not, because life is very unpredictable and it could throw anything at us anytime, any day, any minute. So when you wake up with that mindset, well, you approach the day very different. And me as an entrepreneur, it took me, I'm 43, I'll be 44 in a few weeks. It took me 40 years to figure that out. So I'm willing to share that with everyone, that entrepreneurship, you never stop. You know, I used to think that entrepreneurship was one day I'll get there and then I'm able to relax. Well, no, it's not true because every day I add more responsibilities to my plate because every, every company that I own and every parallel I'm involved with, my responsibilities don't get smaller, they get bigger. bigger. Because the more people that we bring to the team, the bigger the responsibility. So for me, it's a duty that I have to continue to evolve and grow myself to be able to continue to sustain the company, right? right? So entrepreneurship, guys, is just, that's my background, entrepreneurship, you know, and we'll get into details of the companies, the crazy ideas that I come up with, my partners, but at the end of the day, I've always been that entrepreneur. I've felt through my whole life trying to figure this thing out, 
And today I can say I'm very grateful that finally I'm seeing the light at the end of the tunnel because that's very honest. It's not about how much money we make, it's how many people we've impacted and how many lives have we changed. And that's what entrepreneurship really is. And, and I, I, I agree with you on that one. And unfortunately, sometimes we, got, we get told that entrepreneurship is just building one business, being profitable and just enjoy it for the rest of your life. However, we all know that that is not the reality of things and that's not how it works. And this thing is really rugged. <laughs> I wish you guys can see what we're about to go through. I don't know if Fernando's gonna catch it, but. It's pretty crazy. It is deep. That's how entrepreneurship it, it is. It is, 100% that's what I was gonna tell you. The entrepreneurship, and you said something super, that I wanna kinda of elaborate on, is that when, 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 People see success, right? Or people see an entrepreneur. They think that when you when you already touched it and felt it, that it's over, right? You, you're you no. One of the things that I, I'm, you know, and this is something I want all you guys to understand is this: that we live in the fastest changing world that humanity has ever seen. So if you get comfortable, there's going to be somebody else out there working harder than you to take <laughs> it away. <laughs> so I learned that the hard way, yeah, right? I mean, so I never get comfortable. And technology moves faster than anything else. I don't know if you know the statistics, but every century that we live, right, took, it's 100 years of living. Well, in today's times, we literally live one century every year of technological advances. So the human brain, right, that I'm very antiquated, I'm 40 something. I didn't grow up with technology, so I'm not tech savvy. But everybody on my team, all my business partners are. are. So I'm, a, I'm blessed to be able to have that leverage on my team because if not, I couldn't catch up to them. And that's a reality that entrepreneurs don't understand. You think that you already made it and that you could just sit back and, and, and enjoy what you built. And you can, but it has to be very, very, um, minimize because everything's changing every single day. Let's talk about social media, right? You know, how many people got popular on social media 10 years ago because there was no logarithm. And now you make a post and Instagram decides who the, who's gonna see. Yeah. They control you, right? So guess what you have to do as, as a social media influencer? You gotta figure out what they're changing to be able to adapt to their changes. If not, guess what? You're gonna die. And that's just one thing. Imagine entrepreneurship, you know, uh, say insurance. Insurance is, is very antiquated, right? How many people are still sitting in their desk hoping that somebody walks okay. in the door and sells a policy, Yeah. right? The people are not gonna walk in anymore. What are they doing? They're surfing what? The internet. The internet. And if you're not, if you don't have exposure on the internet and you don't understand how social media changes <laughs> daily, how are you gonna be able to attract the client? That is very, very true. Right. Very, very true. So let's just jump back into the beginning of Cesar's Gomez, Cesar Gomez's um, life and entrepreneurship and business. So you had two jobs. Yep. You said, you know what? Working for somebody is not what I want to do. What was your first crazy idea that you said, I'm going to try to see if it works? And how did that start? And, and so in, in college, you know, I went, I went to Cal Poly Pomona and there was a you know, I've been networking since back then, and I didn't realize it, but one of my networks that I, I met at Cal Poly, he was a computer information system major. He was from Coachella, and we were talking, and he's like, yeah, I gotta go to my dorm, I gotta finish building my computer. And I was like, building your computer, what do you mean? He's like, yeah, he's like, I just built computers for myself and my roommates, and I was like, huh. And back then, we're talking about 1998, 1999, a computer was a big thing. Yeah. And, and I was like, oh, you know how to build a computer? He's like, yeah, so that's what I do. I was like, so what is it? So I got curious, so I started asking him, like, how do, you, how do you do it? What does it take? And he told me, like, what it costs to get the parts. He actually had a wholesaler that he would buy parts from down, you know, it was a couple of miles away from, from the university. And I told him, I was like, if I buy anything, would you build it? And he's like, yeah. And, the, and, the, and the, a, a light bulb went on my head, I was like, huh. What if, <laughs> what if he builds it and I sell it? And I asked him, I was like, would you be open to building computers and I go sell them? And he's like, who's gonna buy them? I was like, I don't know. And I didn't know. So I was like, I'll go, f excuse my French, I'll go fucking knock on doors and sell these fucking computers. 
So long story short, I, I, I got the money together. I went and bought the parts and he built it. And I was like, all right, cool, I'll be back, I'm gonna sell it. And he looked at me like, who's, like, you're crazy. Like, like, you're crazy. <laughs> so I literally left and I come back with money. I sold the fucking computer. I would go no door knocking and, and there was a couple apartment complexes down the street. So I literally went to the comp, uh, apartment complex and I fucking knocked on doors and I, and I sold the computer. And, you know, it was crazy because then I was like, wow, like, I literally made, I think it was $1,000 off that sale. So I was like, okay, now what? And he, and that's when the dial-up was, was going on. Remember when you would have to get like, yeah. So there was uh, America Online, but then there was a company called Net Zero that you would use the DVDs for free. So I came across the DVD and I told him, I was like, what happens if we install the DVD with Net Zero and tell them they get free internet by buying the computer? And he's like, well, you sold the computer, it should work. <laughs> so we added net zero. Next thing you know, we're fucking getting orders coming in. Back then there was really no internet ad, so I would publish ads on like Penny Saver and put a little ad and people would call and get information on our computers. Next thing you know, I was like, you know what? The biggest challenge is money. Because we were selling these computers, I think for like $3,000. It was costing us about twelve, fourteen hundred dollars $1,400 in parts. So I was like, what happens if I find a bank that finances? Boom, I found a bank that will finance these computers. So I would give people zero interest for uh, six or 12 months and they could just, and I'll drop the computer off in the bank of payment. And that's how, you know, that business came about during college. So that's how I maneuvered through college. I was selling computers and then I didn't have to go door knocking anymore. People were calling the number we had on there. And my dad had a small business in the city of Rialto and he let me borrow his office. He had an empty office and literally that's where we built computers. So after school, me and him will meet there. He'll, I would just watch him build them and then I'll take orders and then I'll go sell them. Uh, you know, and I've always been that person that will go out there and make the sell. I'll be the transactor. And you know, I didn't know at that time what that was creating for me. It was developing my sell skills. It was developing my people skills. And today, I that realization of just that one, I, that one thing that I've done hundreds of, right? Not hundreds, but I have a handful of those experiences under my belt. It taught me to realize that I'm a connector. I could connect things and make them work. And and through that creativity, that that creativity side of that I have. That's how I've been able to maneuver through all these ventures. And people ask, like, how do you manage that? How do you even do that? Because the thing is, I'm not the one doing it. I'm the one with the crazy idea. And then I find the people that are already trying to crack the code on the idea. And then I put a team together and then we make the idea happen. That's crazy. So now, now I understand why you always, um, because every time we talk and when, when, when you were your, had another business that we, we, we'll talk about right now, you always kind of find, okay, this is what's here, this is what's here, we need here, and then boom, you plug in things together very, very well. Um, and I don't think that's just something that you are born with um, or study or learn. I think that just came with who you are, no? You know, I, I think, you, Or what do you think? And then I have, I have, I have a, a, a thought on it. I think we all were put on this earth and God gave each, each one of us a talent, yeah. right? Maybe four, max. And it's our job to figure out what those talents are, right? And to me, I've always been necio, you know? The word, how do you say necio in English? Stubborn. I'm stubborn. That if I can't figure something out, I'm going to try until I figure it out. And even if it costs me time, energy, sweat, tears, my wife being mad at me, business partners being mad, I will continue to try until I figure it out. So that has always been in my DNA. There's people that don't have that, and it's fine. And I think- Or they quit, to, or they'll stop. Well, what happens is, I, I, you know, I wanna add to that is, I seen people that are on my team now, that they were trying to do things that was not their calling. That's one thing I have when you say connecting things. Mm -hmm. I know how to, I, I am pretty well at, at identifying what people's strengths are and I put them in those positions to shine. And when they shine, they don't really care about success or money because it's already happening while they do that. So one of the things is, for me, my calling is to identify people's strengths and be able to help position their strengths to be able to just catapult them to the moon. And it helps me catapult my idea. 
So it's a win-win. It's a domino effect to win-win. So people quit because they're doing the wrong things. They're not, they don't understand. And nobody teaches us this. Nobody teaches us that we need to identify what our strengths are or our talents, right? My talent that God gave me was to go out there and be stubborn and figure things out. And people look at me like, how the fuck you do that? Right? And then I go do it and it's like, well, it wasn't even that hard. And for a lot of people, super hard. Yeah. So then their talent is not my talent. Their talent is not like mine. It's not connecting. It's not networking. And it's okay. But what I find is a lot of people out there networking, thinking that that's what their talent is, when their talent is to be able to build this. And then they built this. I'll give you an example. I have an NFT project, right? I, and I was sharing with you. That NFT project, one of my partners is a creative soul. This guy's creativity for art, for idea is next to the company he owns. He He's great at it, but that's not his strength. Now this project that we put together is a strength and he's doing a fabulous job that we have, I mean, I don't want to name drop, but there's celebrities out there that have looked at the work that we're doing on this project and they're blown away because I found out that that was his talent, his calling, and he's leveraging, he's he actually, building up on his talent and I'm blessed to be able to put the idea together for him to grow on that aspect. Yeah, I know you, when you were telling me that, I think that was very, very smart because, you know, like we were talking about, so before we started rolling um, cameras, we were talking about NFTs and I told, you know, Caesar, I'm like, I, I didn't understand it. I, it got brought up to my lap. I'm like, who's gonna want to buy a piece of art? To me, it was just a picture. They didn't see the value in it, but, when you know you were talking about the add-ons and the um, utility. utility, that's when it all literally makes sense, right? And having that plugged in, it's amazing. But that's something that. So, walk me through your your vision, your your, your daily mentality. So I do you a, scope? What, what this is what I mean. But but the question is going to be this: Do you? You're in a group of people. Um, are you scoping? Are you trying to see who this guy is? Um, you know, he's good at that. I like how he speaks or he's dressed well or, oh, he came with so-and-so. How do you, how does your brain work to, to do what you do so good? Yeah, that's a great question. I'm breaking down into like sections. Um, first of all, when I, when I'm looking for something, right? And I'll give you an example, like when I'm looking for my next piece of a company that I want to grow, right? um, I go out there and I ask. I first ask my, my I, I pull out my content. And now, if we want to backtrack of how I did it back then, maybe I think let's talk about that because yeah. I can make it sound easy now because I just pick up my phone and go through phone numbers of people and I just make two phone calls and I'll, you know. Boom. But let's go back when I had nothing, when I was, you know, and, and, and when I was trying to figure this thing out. I would literally go, and this is one thing that, if, if you're in the insurance game, right, which I am as well, and you know this, I've been in it, what, six and a half years, years or so, right? And what did I do? I would go put myself out there without, this is this is the magic, right? A lot of us go somewhere with an intention. If you go out there with an intention, and I get goosebumps, right? Because I'm gonna tell you, the, this is the fact. If you are, if anybody that's listening is going out there and say, okay, I wanna become the best insurance agent for auto, for Medicare, let's talk about that parallel. What do you do? You go to conventions, right? And you go out there and there's booths, there's people networking. What does everybody have in their mind? I'm gonna see who the fuck I can connect with and figure out how to get in with the door with mm -hmm. them, right? Well, that's that's a selfish mindset, right? And I used to do that. I used to go to the events and be like, okay, who am I gonna network? Who am I gonna get in with? And you know, pretty much the, the analogy of who am I gonna go in bed with, right? That was my mindset. And guess what happens? You attract the wrong people because you have an intention, you have an agenda. But if you go solely just to be genuine, and this is one thing I have a philosophy. You, you go and connect with the person with zero intention, that it feels natural. Yeah. When you go with an intention and agenda, it feels forced. If you try to approach me, and a lot of people have with that intention, I'll, I'll sense it and I wouldn't even fuck with you. And that's just me not being egoistic. It's because I see the intention. Yeah, you know what they're, what they're really trying to, yeah, I see what you mean. And what has happened to me is this, and this is a lesson I wanna teach anybody out there that's trying to figure out, well, how do I get involved 
or how do I find what I'm miss, missing is that you go out there with zero intention. You go be yourself. You go talk about how you're struggling in your idea. You go tell, if somebody comes up to me and be like, man, I've had the, the, the last, the hardest last three years of my life trying to figure this out. You know what that means to me? That you're vulnerable, that you want to really figure it out. And I hate when people try to lie and be like, oh, I'm fucking crushing it. And you really know, like, no, bro, you're not. I could tell you're not. <laughs> and then you go and, yeah, I know what you mean. You know what I mean? So don't go out, don't be that person that tries to lie. If you, if you really want help from somebody that has been there, be vulnerable and tell them. I'd rather take somebody and say, you know what, bro, I've been stuck here three fucking years and I've done this, this, I connected this. Have you talked to that person? I did, but he blew me off. Hold on, let me make a phone call and I'll reconnect. So going back to the, there's a three-step thing. When you go out there and you're trying to find a missing piece, a missing person, right? You go with no intention. You go with zero intention. You go be yourself. And people will gravitate towards you. That's number one. Say, for example, I meet you at in the convention, right? I know you do insurance. I know you're involved very, big, very, very big in the in the industry. And you have so many resources. I just I just connect with you and we just talk, talk about each other. Fuck the insurance. I want to get to know you. You get to know me. One. Number two is how could I add value to you? What does value mean? That's where people get this messed up. How do I add value to what you're doing? How could I help connect you with the person you need to help you break through? And now he will give you that person, that contact with nothing in exchange. People are trying to get value with exchange and return. I will give you the value with anything in exchange because I don't want to be two, three years down the road and be like, damn, I helped this person. Look at him. He's wealthy now. And I got fucked. No, because at the end of the day, that builds resentment. I'm not doing I'm giving genuine value. If I give you genuine value and then I need your help and I call you, what are you going to do? Right there. What is Help it? me. Yeah. You see those three steps? And that's, you know, going back, how do you find, like you say, how do I think? Is when I talk to someone, I look at their intention. I sense their intention. Like what's behind it? What's all? behind their agenda? Yeah. So going back, when I'm paying attention, I've told you this, I'm a people reader. I just sit back and I watch you. I see if you're trying to show off. I see if you're trying to impress me. And if you're trying to impress me, that's the wrong thing to do with me. I want, I want, I want to know your hardest times. You asked me what was the craziest thing I've done. What's the hardest times I've had, right? And that's what I want to talk about because my successes, you know, I, it's taken me 40 years to even achieve some of them, right? Yeah. And and to be able to see the light at the end of the tunnel took me 40 years. So let's talk about the 40 years. Everybody wants to talk about the wins. Nobody wants to talk about the losses. So if you're out there, if you're out there trying to figure out how do I find the missing piece to my company? How do I find that missing agent that I need? you got to stop having an agenda on people. That's number one. And number two is, again, you got to add value to people. And if you don't have value to add, guess what? you got to get to work. That's it. The only way you add value to people is getting to work. Being able to be, be being able to get in the circle, like I was telling you earlier, the circle down here, it's it, it's it's actually harder than the circle up here, because the circle up here, everybody has the same mindset, the same way of thinking. the The circle down here, everybody thinks the same. They're acting like they're up here, but their they're thinking's acting, here, yeah. their and and you're trying that. to convince these people to take them up here. And the people that are already up here, as soon as they open the door for you, and that comes by adding value, and that becomes by growing yourself, becoming wiser, it gets much easier. People think, oh, well, you got lucky. No, I work my ass off to yeah. be able to add value. I always get that. You're so lucky. <laughs> it's not luck. luck. It, it's yeah. hard work. It's yeah. super hard work. So did I, was I clear on that? And I hope I was able to explain those three steps because those are crucial for anyone that really wants to go out there and get that missing piece. You know, when you go out there at events, pay attention. That's what people do. They have an agenda. They have an intention. So guess what? You you could sense on it. Most people don't. The unfortunate part, people don't have awareness to it, so they don't. They can't sense it. I sense it. So if you take those three steps and you and you implement them in your life, now you're able to go out to the real world and you're able to give connect with the right people and give the value that's needed with nothing in return. And when you do that, you leave, you live a peaceful life because no, you're not going to be like, well, I, I hooked that person up and, and they didn't even give me shit. The universe will give you somewhere else. It'll, it'll put something else on your plate. And who cares? 
Because at the end of the day, just the value I give to people, the connections I give to people, if I sit there and try to think of who I've helped, you know, I'll have I'll live a miserable life. Yeah. So I don't. I just help. And if if and if they want to help me back, great. And if they don't, great. If if they don't help me back, this is this is another thing I have. If they don't help me back, they'll never have access to me or my networks again. And if I call the network that I connected them with to add value, I tell them, hey, this person never fucking helped me back. They'll cut them off. That's just how it works. That's how life works. You can't get anything for free. Right. And for me, it's like I don't want to hurt people. But at the same time, if you're just trying to use me, well, guess what? I'll close the doors. That's yeah. who I am as a person. The value I create now in the in the marketplace and when and as an entrepreneur, that's just how it works. So remember those three steps. Interesting. Have no agen- agenda. You know, just go in there generally. Share your problems. Share how you feel with people. Right. And the and the right people will listen to you, and the wrong people will walk away from you. And that's when you're that. real. That's how you realize. And then number two is add value. And if you can't add value to a person, get your ass to work. And then after, after you add value, after you do these two things, a transaction will occur all the time. Yeah, that's true. That's, that's, that's something that I've personally done the last couple of years. So instead of me saying that, you know, how do I find people and just make a phone call? Because I'm blessed now that I could do that. But it's actually that process. Yeah, I know. It's funny that you say it with a phone call because um, I, I, I saw this on a on a podcast that I was listening to, an audible, can't remember exactly which one it was, I think it was an audible. Um, and it said that uh, most of us don't understand how important this is. Yeah. If you're not, if you don't know how to use your contacts, then you have a problem because you just have information stored here and you don't put it to work. 100%. And I, I was funny because I grabbed my phone and I remember opening it and I was going through all my contacts. I was like, oh damn, I have so-and-so's number. And so and so knows this person, and it was like it, things started triggering for me. Yeah. And it's something that it's 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 yeah. that it's just as simple as that, <laughs> you know. But once again, to be able to create this context, to be able to create this information, you have to work. You have to go out there and it's put yourself. Free. It's not free. You have to be able to say, okay, Alex knows this, Caesar knows this. I'm gonna connect with him with so and so, or I'm gonna connect like how we, you and I, had yeah. our friendship and in, in, in our connection, right? It was just based on one business that we got brought up. Um, you were there. You were. You, you. It was your one of your companies, and it's just things like that. Okay, let's have a phone number. We didn't go in there with no intention. No intention. Once again, it was just yeah, getting to know each other. And here we are right now, uh, enjoying these beautiful views. A hundred percent. And you know, one of the things that a lot of people don't also don't understand is, and, and you you were kind of you you touched on it right now, is that um, your net worth in today's time is not how much money you have in the bank account. Mm-hmm. It's fun. it's it's your networks, right? Like for me, if if I would lose my phone, I'd rather lose my phone than all my money in my bank account. Does that make sense? The money you because I can make money, <laughs> but the contacts are, are what's worth money, right? You know, I, I, if I, if I, you know, and I have this philosophy, and I'm born, I'm human. I can make a mistake that cost me everything, but tomorrow I'll get back on the phone, make one phone call, and, and I'll be right back, back up. up. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I don't have intentions with people, so everybody in my network doesn't have intentions with me, right? No, I we just add value to each other. We continue to grow, and that's important because most of us, um, you know that are entrepreneurs or that we have our own business or maybe people out there that, you know, are trying to get their business going or they want to do something. There's a, there's a saying that everybody, you know, they say it's not what you know, it's who you know. Correct. And it's very, very true. Some people will tell you, oh, well, that's just, you know, taking it the easy route and da 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 or they'll put you down on that. But honestly, it that is how it works because I don't have to be a quarter. I didn't cook anything on Sentry, but I knew the whole concept. I knew the solution to a problem that was out there because I was struggling trying to find something that was gonna help me when I had it in my office and when I was an agent. Yeah. So I just found out who was able to do what and then just plug those things together and then I'm solving how many people's problems. And that's it. And that's the beauty of it. And now just creating more value, that's right? That's what it is, you solve problems. And, and, and that's just the, the best part of it. And, and you know, like you said earlier, I don't wanna make it seem like it's easy, but once you guys understand that part, that it's, who you know, like for instance, you know, we're gonna talk, we're gonna go on our second part of Off-Road with Alex Perez, but let's just say that you guys are interested in one of the things that he does. I just open you that window of opportunity that you can follow him on social media, take the action of you know sending him a message, a DM, or looking for him. It's not just, ah, well, 
you know, it, he's unreachable. And that's another mindset that people have. All right, well, I'm not on that level yet. And, and I still haven't done this. And let's add to that real quick. Unreachable, right? It's not that we're not, we're reachable. Everybody is. Anybody you want to reach, anybody, I don't care who it is. Any person on this planet is reachable, right? But the only thing you got to remember, your intention. Mm-hmm. Right. If I want to reach somebody and this is a great example I want to give. If you want to reach out, for example, myself. Right. If you're trying to pitch me something, but hey, Caesar, I'm doing this. I want you to be part of it. Well, guess what? I am unreachable because I'm not going to reply to you. But if you pay attention to who I am and you could add value to me and you reach out to me, like, hey, I was seeing that you do this, this and this. And I have this person that might be able to help you. Guess what? Now I'm reachable. <laughs> and that's what people got to change. That's what people got to understand. You, you, you're, the people that you're probably DMing, you're DMing them to sell them something or to share your idea. They're, we're not going to listen. We're unreachable. But if you reach out to add value, right, to what That's we're doing. I'll give you a quick example, and then I'll hand it back to you of, of what this means. We have an NFT project working on, we're working on, right? It's called The Playground. It's nostalgic to our childhood toys. And what we did is we wanted to add, okay, what, how could we serve or how, how could we help back to child, to the, you know, to children in this world? It is sex trafficking is something that's really not talked about. So my partner, I told him, I was like, well, let's reach out to us, to any organization, a nonprofit organization out there that we could give back through a project. And, he, and we did. And we reached out and said, how could we help your project how could we give money of our proceedings to your company and guess what they did they were reachable we were on a zoom call last week with the ceo of this project and they're in our project now because we didn't call and say hey, you know we want to uh, you know work with you guys and we have this great idea no how could we give you guys money to keep growing your project that's a two different ways of approaching so guess what now they were reachable and they and they DM us back, and last week we we're on a Zoom call with the CEO. That's crazy. So anybody can be reachable. It just depends on your intention. Everything that you're saying it's relatable to to me, and I hope it's relatable to a lot of you guys. Um, and these are the things that you know you you we've learned. I've learned myself the last couple years. Like I said on the YouTube uh, on YouTube video on Instagram on the story the other day. You know it's it's you're learning. You you learn. You adapt you change and as you know like you said it's no longer your net worth is your network and just building more relationship and just makes you stronger and you take it from there and then you learn so let's jump into the second part let's go get comfortable and let's literally dive into the nitty-gritty let's do it ready let's go